Um, I write for a music magazine and I run my blog Basement Fever and I manage Play Lounge and I sometimes put on gigs and I do other things. Uh, Johnny Gruesome are like a, a five piece indie pop band from Cardiff. Um, although they kind of they all went to uni and are kind of all based all around the UK. I'd already known Owen from living in Cardiff for quite a few years. He um, used to play in lots of bands. Uh, and we just kind of became friends through that and I think we were just chatting on like Facebook chat kind of thing and he said he was starting a new uh, like indie pop band called Joanna Gruesome. So I've kind of seen them grow from literally when it was just Owen's vague idea and like that very early demos where Owen is playing drums and bass and guitar and singing. I'm with Owen from Joanna Gruesome <laughs> and we're in our, in our friend Alice's bedroom and we're talking about things and I'm stroking his face because it's beautiful. Would you rather be Beyonce or Rihanna? Um. Yeah, Beyonce. Why? But then, because um, she's just better, really. <laughs> and like, although Jay Z's got a weird face, so yeah. I'd have to be Beyonce. So you'd, you'd like be Beyonce, Beyonce but like yeah. divorce Jay Z? No, I'd deal with it. <laughs> but what if you could be Taylor Swift as well? I'd be Taylor Swift. No. I'd only be Taylor Swift for that one song. Yeah. You know. 22 is good as well, though. Which was another Taylor Swift song. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> if you had to incorporate either the saxophone or the synthesizer into Joanna Gruesome, which would you opt for? If I do, like, the saxophone setting in the synth. Wow. You could. Would you rather be ugly from a distance but when someone got close to you, it's like, yeah, you're pretty. Or from a distance, it's like, whoa, look at that guy. And then like, when I, they got close, it's like, Ugh. how could you look ugly from a distance? It's a hypothetical out. scenario. <laughs> you're not actually going to become Beyonce or Rihanna, are you? <laughs> Sorry to break my dreams. No, like I'd say, um, I go for the ugly. <laughs> okay, I go for pretty up close, but I'd run at people. <laughs> <laughs> so you so never... can never be from a distance. <laughs> And if I see anyone looking at me from a distance, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> but it's when someone's up close, you can't be like covering your face all the time, being like you're a step a few meters back. Yeah, yeah that's true. Would you rather never eat peanut butter again, or never be allowed to play the guitar again? Because I know you're quite fond of both. If I can't play the guitar, does that mean I can still play the bass? You think about these questions a lot. I know, I'm, I'm sorry I'm poking holes. <laughs> but, like, I just take it serious. When you ask me something, man, I just take it seriously. I just quite, with food I'm quite obsessive, so, although I say I love peanut butter, and I do, <laughs> it's just my obsession, I'm sure I could like transfer that obsession onto something else, whereas if I didn't get to meet music, that would be kind of a bummer. Uh, what, what is the worst thing about being in Joanna Gruesome? The worst thing? I think like... All of the fans? Yeah. And it's just hard to be like, people are always just like, DIY superstars, <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, I'm, I'm not too into like, I'm a modest guy. <laughs> so that's the hardest bit for me, definitely. I'm with Sam from Play Lounge and we're in East London about to get hey. tattooed together. I'm getting my first tattoo and Sam is getting his 14th, 14th tattoo. Keep and I'm a bit real. scared and Sam isn't scared at all. I'm scared for you. The only reason I'm here is because you peer pressured me. This is your idea. Uh... great. How are you feeling, Okay. okay. How's Sam feeling? Um, I met Sam because Laurie from Play Lounge emailed me just to say, kind of, listen to my band, you might like it. Um, and I really liked it, I vlogged about them. And then decided to, um, I turned on some gigs in Kingston at the time, so I thought might as well get Sam and Laurie down to play. Met in person, got on, went to lots of gigs together, made friends. Yeah.
I think it was outside power lunches, I guess, like nine months ago. And Sam was like, you should be our manager. And I was like, no, Sam, you should be our manager. And he just, he, that night, he just kept saying it and saying it and just kept referring to me as their manager. And then I thought, I might as well manage them. So right now I, I just help. It's, kind of, it's quite a loose term, I just kind of help them out. That's for Jay forever. <laughs> I don't really know I'm getting a tattoo of Sam, to be honest. Uh, Sam has lots of tattoos, I have no tattoos. Sam draws the daisies on like play lounge posters and stuff. Some of the good things to get. I mean, if you want to live this punk rock lifestyle, I'll probably should get a tattoo at some point, right? first met Ides just because she plays lots of shows around London, kind of friends with lots of my friends. Sam was friends of her, uh, Owen's friends of her. So it's kind of just kind of part of the same scene, I guess. I think Ides describes her music as sadcore, which is, I guess is like a semi-joke, but it's, it's just her and her guitar and kind of quite, I guess, quite emotive. Live, it's, it's quite intense, you kind of feel quite uh, gripped by a performance. Kind of, it's just, I don't know, I personally feel like you just can't, like, leave. Hi, I'm Ides. Um and I'm playing a song called Cry Baby. Lightly breathing A talking corpse Don't try to see me Don't tell me It's all my fault Didn't you just love it? 